what's the difference between folic acid and folate? And technically it's called folates as in plural, different forms of folate that come from food. All right, why should we know the difference between folic acid and folate? And it's kind of confusing, right? People hear, what is folic acid? What is folate? How do we know? And by the way, this clarity was not always there. I'll tell you how in the first decade of this century, in the 19, 19 into 2000 to about 2010, this is still really being differentiated. Both they knew that folate, folic acid was a problem for all the reasons I just mentioned, but they did not differentiate the different kinds and that they made a difference. So, okay, here's, let's get to it. You have a thing called folic acid and you have a thing called folate. What is the difference? Oxidized synthetic folate, notice it doesn't have any hydrogen. Not that you're ever going to memorize this, but this is the oxidized form and this is the reduced form, reduced dietary folate from food, from synthetically added to your food. So you find it in a lot of cereals, a lot of grains, a lot of flours. They try to make it healthier, but they add it back in. All right, so the human gut has a very efficient capacity to convert dietary folate, what you see in nature, we'll call it, to a very active form, 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, the active form, 5-MTH, but a limited ability to reduce synthetic folate. So it can only use this so far, it can use this with open arms, unlimited. Here we go. So synthetic folate, consider it a vitamin supplement, and then this has also now become a supplement, as you are have probably become aware, but here's the difference here. So synthetic folate actually has to go through a number of steps before it can be in the active form of folate. And there's a reason that some people really need this active form of folate and others that don't, and that has to do with their mutations, their SNPs, we'll get into that. Okay, so it has to go through dihydro, tetrahydro, 510 methylene, tetrahydro, and so on and so forth. So in order for folic acid to be converted into the active form, 5-MTHF, it must go through four stage trans, uh, transformation process. Whereas MTHF, which is now a supplement that you can get, relatively recent in the last five years, it's new relatively speaking, right? So if you get this, it goes, boom, anybody can use this. It's the active form. It doesn't need to be treated at all. You take it, it goes. All right, so what's, what's the difference? And now we have this thing called a SNP, single nuclear polymorphisms, a mutation that a lot of people have, myself and my wife have, associated with a lot of conditions. They need more of folic acid. They need more of folate, I should say, in their diet, and they just require more than the average person by a lot. And if they do not get this, they will have any of those problems we already just mentioned above. Okay, folate deficiency may contribute to one third of cancer deaths. So folate, and this is from various research I'm giving you. So if you're interested, just look at the bottom of the slides as I get to it. May contribute to one third of cancer deaths. Folates, a group of water-soluble vitamins present in high concentration in liver, and to a lesser extent, green leafy vegetables maintain DNA stability by creating methyl groups for cellular metabolism. We'll see about that. Folate deficiency has been implicated in several cancers, including colon, breast, ovarian, pancreatic, brain, lung, and cervical cancers. People who habitually consume the highest level of folate or have the highest blood folate concentrations has significantly reduced risk of developing colon polyps or cancer. So highest folate, highest form from nature, okay? Recent data indicate that an excessive intake of synthetic, a vitamin supplement, not the MTHFR, synthetic folate from high dose supplements or fortified foods may increase human cancers by accelerating growth of precancerous lesions. Studies indicate that dietary folate from nature is genoprotective against colon cancer. Folate maintains genomic genes stability by regulating DNA biosynthesis, DNA repair, and DNA methylation. These three, in other words, it takes care of DNA 
in all aspects. And if you rem remember from former videos, we talked about a healthy methylation ratio, right? Those cells, if they're methylated or turned off, those cells that are not methylated are turned on. And it has that very discretionary moment by moment ability to keep off what is off in terms of genes from becoming active and on what is on. Critical. Suboptimal folate status in human is widespread. Folate deficiency includes accelerated, accelerated carcinogenesis, just like we can say accelerated aging by blocking these processes. We'll go into detail. And there's a study for that, should you be interested. All right, so more on the negative effects of using folic acid instead of dietary folate. By the way, you can go and look at a previous video I did called Reverse Aging with Food and Supplements. There's the, there's the link, um, and it's in a few parts, so you can really explore that. I'm not going to go in that avenue. I'm just going to touch on that, and they obviously intersect. And this was a slide from that series. Several trials have found a positive association between methyl donor supplementation and increased cancer risk published long-term follow-up of a lot of people, um, which assessed the effect of two or three years of daily supplementation with 400 micrograms of folic acid, folic acid, and 500 micrograms of B12, found an increased risk of cancer. Wait a minute, increased risk of cancer. And colorectal cancer, in particular, uh, meta-analysis in two Norwegian studies, also reported that 800 micrograms of folic acid plus B12 was associated with increased cancer outcomes. So let me go back and put this in a real context. Back in 2000 and coming forward, there was confusion in medicine in general. And in fact, that those who had cancer, part of um, cancer therapy was usually given a chemotherapeutic, you know, that's what they sit around and they got these IVs of this toxic substance pumped through their bloods. But what that did is specifically it was meant to kill cancer cells and kill other cells as well. But their target was the cancer cells and they were going to block folate because that had to do with cellular repetition, cellular growth, cellular respiration. So if they could block folate, they would kill the cancer cells, was the thinking. But they didn't know if it was folic acid or folate. They didn't really differentiate it back then. And so the question was, you were actually you know, if you starve the body of folate, what else happens? You're putting the rest of the body at risk of other cancers with the idea that you're, can you're focusing on the cancer the person has and you're killing that faster. So folate was a big deal to the point that those patients actually took a thing called methotrexate, which was the chemotherapeutic agent that blocked folate. And it was forbidden to give cancer patients any form of folate or folic acid. So that was barely 20 years ago. They didn't differentiate till the difference between folate and folic acid. They said, do not. You, know, you would be sued as a doctor if you then gave them folate, which you could have done looking back. The difference between folate from food versus folic acid synthetic supplement can make a big difference in the outcome. In contrast, dietary folate intake from food was found to be inversely associated with bladder cancer progression, um, whereas a higher, also found a higher reoccurrence for folic acid. So now they're starting to differentiate between these two. And a baseline dietary folate intake was inversely associated with prostate cancer. So going on and on and on, a lot of studies are now saying, wait a minute, do you give folate, do you not give folate? Do you block folate, do you not block folate? What's going on here? Um, they also found out that when you gave these methyl donors, but you included folic acid, things got worse. So folic acid plus B6 plus B, B12 and vitamin D plus calcium all sounded good. Increased biological aging, increased accelerated aging during a one year intervention. Hi, I just wanted to mention if this is something you're interested in, finding the nutritional value of food in general, relative to deficiencies, relative to various chronic diseases that we have, you really would appreciate this following video over here and a whole series I put together about that. Not just about epigenetics, but about nutrients and about food. Something we all need to take responsibility for, our own health. Till then.